If you need to filter elements in an array, you should be using the filter method. There's no need to iterate over the array with a loop in order to check each element. In this tutorial, we will dive into the array filter method. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. Filter, map, and reduce are three array methods that are frequently used with functional programming patterns. However, even if you don't follow a functional programming paradigm, you should be using these methods to simplify solutions. I've covered these methods briefly before, but in this tutorial, we will dive deeper into the filter method. So here is our example problem. I have an array of scores. These are all the scores received from some assignment or test. And I want to only work with passing scores right now. So how do I get an array of just the passing scores? And let's say the passing scores are everything above 60. For the longest time with JavaScript, I would automatically use a loop thinking, well, I need to iterate over each value and I need to check each value to see if it's a passing score. And so that logically said to me a loop. Well, if you haven't already done so, you need to adjust your thinking to think about using filter for this type of problem instead of a loop. Filter will automatically iterate over every value in that array and it will also automatically create a second array. So filter doesn't modify your existing array. You get a brand new array. So let's take a look at filter and how it works. Now, first thing I'm going to do is set up a variable pass scores. Now, as I said, filter will automatically return a new array. And so I want a variable that I can place that in. And that's going to be pass scores. So then we set that equal to scores.filter. Here is the filter method. Now by using filter on our array, it will automatically cycle through each value. All the values that are in this array. Now what will it do with that value? Well, what it does is it passes each value in turn to a function. So we need to send filter a function. Right now it doesn't have a function. I haven't passed one in yet. We need to send it one. So let's do that next. So I will define a function. Here we have our function. I haven't included anything in the body yet, but we've set up our function definition. Now, this function has to have a way to grab those values as filter passes the values into the function. So we will place a variable here to grab that. So that will in turn grab each value as filter passes it into the function. Now, the type of function required by filter is called a predicate function, which simply means that it returns either true or false. So we need to write the body of the function so it returns true or false. Now, if it returns a true value, what that tells filter to do is place the value inside the new array. If it returns a false value, it won't place it inside the new array. So everything we want to include in this new array, passing scores, needs to return a true value. So that's really just as simple as, here's our return statement, and checking to see if the value is greater than 60. Simple as that. So if the value is greater than 60, it will return true. If it's less than or equal to 60, it will return false. Anything true will get placed into the new array. Anything false will not. All right, let me save that. Refresh. Open the console. And let's look at pass scores array. And there we have a brand new array. And as you can see, everything is above 60. None of the scores that were below 60 were included in this new array. So that is how filter works. Much easier than creating a loop and 
trying to cycle through every value, check that value, then set it in a, in a new array. This is just much simpler. And if you choose to, you can use an arrow function. Arrow functions are commonly used with filter, map, and reduce. And it makes it even simpler. Let's just look at how it would look with an arrow function. There is the arrow. That's why it's called an arrow function. And there we go. If we save that, refresh, and check past scores again, we get the same array. So the exact same thing, but even simpler, a lot less to type. Now, before we are done here, please hit the like button. It can help others on YouTube find this tutorial. Also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. Now you can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for full courses and a complete list of tutorials. Thanks for watching.